the suspect in the murders of four University of Idaho students due in court today. It comes as we hear from the family of Kaylee Gonsalves, one of the students killed in 2022. Her family sat down with ABC News Live anchor Kana Whitworth ahead of today's hearing. We're just left in limbo. Kaylee Gonzalez's parents sharing exclusively with GMA never before seen pictures and videos of their 21 year old daughter. This is a type of, you can like season with these, you can't really season with them, but you can cook with them. Yeah, I know that's in front of the tower. Yeah. This is at the, in front of the University of Idaho Tower. Mm -hmm. The family still waiting on a full digital copy of Kaylee's phone from authorities. These are the Sunday. last moments of your child's life, and you're sitting here fighting with somebody who just doesn't care. They were able to collect some of Kaylee's belongings from the university over the summer, which raised concerns for them about how well possible evidence was processed, including a trash can from Kaylee's room that was full and appeared untouched. We opened it. It was a little um, squeezy applesauce thing like you would give to like a toddler. It did not appear to have been gone through. Police saying they had gathered more than 100 pieces of physical evidence from the scene, along with some 4,000 photos and 3D scans of the residents. Still, frustration mounting for the family over what they consider a lack of communication and a rush to tear down the home on King Road. Christy describes for the first time how Kaylee was found. It's my understanding Kaylee was kind of sitting up. Yes. And had fought. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the way that, that room's put together, if you come through that door, you can't get out of that room. Completely, totally trapped. Yeah. You're in tiny, a bed. Tiny, tiny room. The bed, the, the bed was the, the entire room. You could barely open up the door without swiping the, the foot of the bed. And it was wall, wall. You know, the headboard was up against the wall. The side where Kaylee was on was up against the wall. And if you can imagine Kaylee in an upright sort of position up in the corner, slumped. I mean, she was trapped. The home on King Road was torn down in the pre-dawn hours of December 28th. And ABC News Live anchor Kena Whitworth joining me now alongside legal contributor Brian Buckmeyer. Uh, Kena, just incredible reporting there. So what do we expect from today's hearings? Yeah, so it's going to be a busy day here at the Latak County Courthouse. There's two pivotal hearings today, and the first one is sealed. The public does not have access to that, and we're, it's our understanding that there will be at least one of three motions discussed. The, there's been three motions filed by the defense to have the charges against Brian Koberger thrown out, so they'll discuss at least one of those. They will also likely discuss how much discovery the defense will have access to in terms of genealogy. Then the second hearing is open to the public, and it's in that same vein, where it's our understanding the defense will be asking the judge to reconsider a previous decision of his to not throw out the charges against Koberger. There is also a scheduling conference slated for later this afternoon, and that is what the families will be paying very close attention to. They want a trial date set. Yeah, they're eager for, for justice in this case. And, and Brian, there have been three separate attempts to have the indictment thrown out. Now they're saying they want some of the details in the most recent one made public. You know, are they betting on some sort of, you know, public goodwill here? here? I'm not sure if I would use the word public goodwill, but, but it is in that vein. The reason why I think they would do this, or at least why I would do this as a former public defender is, all of the news and all of the information about this case is one-sided because of what's coming out and also just the horrific, horrificness of this case. We're hearing all the facts that could incriminate Brian Koberger. If you're his defense attorney, you want to get some information out there to kind of give a resemblance of reasonable doubt because ultimately the public is going to be there when they select a jury and they want some argument to be able to push back in this case before a jury is selected. But Brian, why would they make just one hearing private? I think it's the nature of the hearings. In the first hearing, we know that starts at 11 a.m. Pacific time. They're talking about biased jury, inadmissible evidence, lack of sufficient evidence, and prosecutorial misconduct, sorry. That is very fact-specific as to what happens in the grand jury, and typically the grand jury is secretive. And so to get into the nitty-gritty of that information, you have to get into what is typically secret in the grand jury. However, the 1 p.m. Pacific time uh, hearing, that's to reconsider the grand jury uh, decision based on a statutory and interpretation of what the standard of proof should be and case law. That's more procedural, more legal. You're not going to get into the facts of the case per se. And so that's more likely to be open to the public. And I think that's why they made the distinction.
And Kano, we know that you've been all over the story doing some incredible reporting, talking with families there. When could a trial date be set and what does justice look like for these families? All right, so first, it's entirely possible that a trial date does get set today. Remember, the prosecution has asked for the judge to set a trial date for this summer. They're isolating the summer because they don't want it to be disruptive to the community, to the university, and to schools. I mean, from where I'm standing, just at the end of the block here, there's a high school. Uh, there's also a lower school around the corner as well. So they, they're eyeing this summer so that it's not disruptive. That is something that this family wants as well, especially the Gonzalez family. And in terms of justice, it is different, right, for every family. A reminder that the prosecution is seeking the death penalty in this case. And when I was speaking with Steve Gonzalez last night, he said, you know, if they have the right guy, he said the message should be that if you come to Idaho and you do something like this, you die for it. He said that's the best they can ask for. Yeah, very strong words. Kana Whitworth and Brian Buckmeyer, thank you both. And be sure to listen to Kana's podcast on the case. You can listen to the King Road Killings wherever you get your podcast. <laughs> Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.